فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ورنا وكتاب ثلاثة الأصول باي شيخ الإسلام Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullahu ta'ala we, had, we, stop, we stopped at the point where the author was saying وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ قال الشافعي رحمه الله لو ما أنزل الله حجة على خلقه إلا هذه السورة لكفتهم The author رحمه الله He said The evidence For the four For the four previous mentioned matters which was al-ilm wal-amal wal-da'watu ilayh wal-sabru ala al-adha fih one knowledge implementing that knowledge calling to that knowledge and being patient on all of it those four matters istadal al-musannif rahimahullahu ala hadhi al-masail al-arba' بصورة عظيمة لا تزيد على ثلاثة آيات The author رحمه الله He used the evidence for those four matters سورة العصر Which is only three verses The first matter Which was knowledge Is in the verse إلا الذين آمنوا That is knowledge وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ is the second matter that we were speaking about which is to implement the knowledge which you know. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ is the third matter which we were talking about which is to call to the path of Allah. And the fourth which is وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ which is to be patient. So all four of them the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he extracted it from this verse or from this surah. This surah, Surah Al Asr, Allah Ta'ala starts by saying, Wal Asr. This is a qasam, it's an oath in which Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is doing. And the intention or the meaning, sorry, the meaning behind Al-Asr is it is time in general. Some of the scholars, وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ مَنْ قَالَ From the scholars, there are those who said that Asr means who are Asr al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It is the Prophet's time. ومن أهل العلم من قال and from the scholars are those who said إن المراد بالعصر that the meaning behind Asr here is وقت صلاة العصر the time of the صلاة العصر and that it is صلاة الوسطى. Some of the scholars they said Al Asr means the life of the human. وَقِيلَ الْعَصْرِ And some of the scholars, they also said that the Asr is meant by مَا بَعْدَ زَوَالِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَى غُرُوبِهَا After the zawal, the zenith, until the sun sets. 
and what is strongest inshallah ta'ala which Hafiz Ibn Kathir chose Ibn Jarir al-Tabari rahimahullah chose is that the first opinion is correct that al-asr is time unrestrictedly it is the time التي تقع فيه الأحداث in which events occur the good of it or the bad of it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he can swear by whatever he wills from his creation Allah azza wa jalla lahu an yaqsima bima sha Allah can swear by whatever he wills min khalqi from his creation wa laysa lil makhluqi but for the creation it is not permissible for them to swear by anything other than Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he swore by time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he swore by day and night and he did all of that subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the great importance that time holds Allah says in surah al-furqan ayah 62 وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He made the time, He made day and evening and morning and afternoon, all of that, so the person can take benefit and heed from it, and that the person can be, or can show gratitude to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Well, Asr is a Qasam, as I said. And a Qasam requires a Jawabul Qasam, which is the reply to the oath. For instance, if a person says, Wallahi, then you are waiting for this oath, what is it going to go to? Wallahi, what? So when Allah swore by the time, what is he swearing by? What is it? So in Arabic, it's called Jawabul Qasam. Allah says, Innal insana lafi khusr. Verily, all mankind are in loss. And this is the Jawabul Qasam. I said that Allah wa Ta'ala said in that verse that mankind is all, and I use the word all, because the Alif Al Lam in the word Al Insan, the Alif Al Lam in there, is al-istighraq wa-shumul al-istighraq wa-shumul which basically means everything so every human being is in loss where's the evidence that this alif al-lam is istighraq that it means everything the evidence is بِدَلِيلِ الْإِسْتِثْنَاءِ بَعْدَهُ The exception that occurs after it which is إِلَّا الَّذِينَ The illa here is it's an exception so that shows you that the word الْإِنسَان showed generalization so it would mean كُلُّ إِنسَانٍ كُلُّ إِنسَان that every human being في خسر is in loss and it's like the verse of Allah in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 28, where Allah says, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا That Allah created الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا الْإِنسَان means all of mankind are weak. So الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا means all of mankind, without any exception. The word Al-Khusr, It means النقصان والهلكة is when something decreases. It means when something decreases or it gets destroyed and lost comes to it. Because لأن حياة الإنسان because of the life of the human being هي رأس ماله it's, it's, the thing, it's the greatest thing that you possess. If you die 
and you haven't believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have not come with righteous actions then you would truly go through a great loss فَإِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنْ وَلَمْ يَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا خَسِرَ كُلَّ الْخُسْرَانِ And one of the amazing things in the verse is and that is in this surah and it's truly the i'jaz the miracle that are in it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't clarify to us what type of loss rather Allah left it unrestricted وَلَمْ يُبَيِّنْ هُنَا نَوْعُ الْخُسْرَانِ فِي أَيِّ شَيْءٍ بَلْ أَطْلَقَ لِيَعُمَّا it was left unrestricted. Because we know by looking at the Quran, Waladi Yustafadu mi mafumil aya and al Khusran Kad Yakunu Bil Kufr that the Khusran can be disbelief. Walayadu Billah. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he said, La in Asharakta la Yahbatana Amaluk. وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ So the khusran, the loss here is is based on disbelief. All your actions are going to go and be nullified. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 31 The ones who have disbelieved in the meeting of Allah are upon loss. So those ayat are talking about al-kufr. But then other ayat Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he said وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فِي جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدُونَ And this one is what? They left actions. This one is بِتَرْكِ amal. They left actions. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ Anyone who is scale becomes light the day of judgment they are the ones who are going to go through loss and in the hellfire they will stay in there forever وَقَالَ تَعَالَى Allah says وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذِ الشَّيْطَانَ وَلِيًّا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانًا مُبِينًا anyone who takes shaytan as an ally besides Allah then verily that person will be upon loss what a great loss and a clear loss you would be on. Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 119. And again in Surah Al-Mujadal, Allah says, Allah inna hizballah, Allah, sorry, Allah inna hizbash shaytani humul khasirun. Allah inna hizbash shaytani humul khasirun. So, those are talking about the different types of loss. وَقَدْ يَكُونُ الْخُسْرَانُ بِتَرْكِ التَّوَاصِي بِالْحَقِّ Sometimes the khusran could probably be if a person leaves off telling somebody the truth in, in totality or telling the people to come with falsehood. It could also be by telling the people to leave off being patient in totality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ اطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ انْقَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِ خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ That is talking about a person who falls into stress and depression. If good comes to him, he's happy. He's enjoying himself. But then when he's tested and Allah afflicts him with a problem or pain, he falls off. And Allah tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala that those people are upon clear loss. So what this ayah, inna al-insana la fi khus, is unrestricted. So all those form of losses, they fall under it. Depending on what type of person is being dealt with. So it can encompass all of them. Allah left it unrestricted. And what we really need to understand, my brothers and sisters, is أَنَّ الْإِنسَانَ فِي خُسْرٍ مَهْمَا كَثُرَ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ That mankind is upon loss. It doesn't matter how much wealth you have. It doesn't matter how many children you have. It doesn't matter 
however high your status is. It doesn't, how high, it doesn't matter how high your level is or your status is. You're only going to leave that loss when those four conditions or those four characteristics are present in you. So based on that, my brothers and sisters, it's upon all of us. Every one of us has to look into his situation and his affairs. And that we should know with certainty that there is no success for any one of us from that loss except that path which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paved for us. Except that path which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paved for us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا This is a dis- first description that is mentioned here for those who are not going to fall under loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا هَذَا هُوَ الْوَصْفُ الْأَوَّلِ That is the first description. لِمَنْ يَسْلَمُ مِنَ الْخُسْرَى مِنَ الْخَسَارَةِ The one who is going to make it outside and not be from those who are lost and destroyed. And what is it, my brothers and sisters? Who wasful iman is the description of iman. What does it mean to come with iman? It means those who believe bima amar Allah Taala, everything Allah has commanded. It means that you believe in Allah Tabarak wa Taala. You believe in the angels of Allah, and you believe in the books. You believe in the prophets. You believe in all the six articles of faith. You also believe everything that will get you closer to Allah wa Taala, which is legislated by Allah wa Taala and His Messenger. Then Allah goes on to say, "Wa amilu salihat." Al murad bil amal salih, the intent behind and the meaning behind al amal salih is. أفعال الخير كلها All types of good سواء كانت ظاهرة أم باطنة It doesn't matter whether that action is external or internal It doesn't also even matter متعلقة بحق الله تعالى whether it's connected to the rights of Allah or متعلقة بحقوق العباد or whether it's connected to the rights of the creation It doesn't matter whether it's an obligatory act من قبيل الواجب أو من قبيل المستحب or if it's from the recommended things as long as it's done on, with sincerity and it's in accordance to the sunnah وتواصوا بالحق the حق that is meant in this verse is and Allah knows best it is the four mentioned points which is Al-Iman Billah Wal Amal Salih. They call the people to that. They call the people to beneficial knowledge, which is Al-Iman Billah Wal Amal Salih, which is righteous actions. They call the people to it. And whilst calling to it, they come with the fourth, last one, which is Wa Tawasaw Bis They call each other to patience. We've spoken about patience and we mentioned what it is. Patience on the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Patient from the things that Allah had prohibited from us. Patient on the things that Allah wa ta'ala has afflicted us with. They call each other to it. Then the author, rahimahullah, he said, Qala shafi'iyu. That Imam al-Shafi'i said, Imam al-Shafi'i, he is from one of the four a'imma that is followed. Who are min al-a'imma til arba'ah. He's from the four a'imma who are followed. He was born the year 150 Hijriya. And he died 
204. Rahimahullah ta'ala. It was said that he was born the year which Imam Abu Hanifa died. So that year Abu Hanifa died and Imam Shafi'i was born. Some scholars, they went a step ahead and step forward and they said rather the day Abu Hanifa died was the day Imam Shafi'i was born. But Allah knows best. Imam Shafi'i only lived for 54 years. This great Imam who's followed who has a madhab today which thousands of people around the globe follow he only lived for 54 years and that shows us my brothers and sisters when a person has beneficial knowledge and comes with righteous actions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he blesses for them their time and Allah wa ta'ala allows for them to do in that very short period of their life to do more than other people who have double that age but can't do what Imam Shafi'i did. Imam Shafi'i is the teacher of Imam Abu Abu Abdullah Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala. He is also the teacher of and Imam Al-Muzani rahimahullah and also the teacher of Rabi' ibn Sulaiman al-Muradi Imam Al-Muzani Ismail ibn Yahya Al-Muzani he said I read the book Kitab al-Risala by Imam al-Shafi'i 50 times and he said every single time I read it I benefited something new from it. The Kitab al-Risala is a book that Imam al-Shafi'i wrote to speak about a field that was never spoken before about. A field that we study today which is known as Usul al-Fiqh which is the fundamentals of jurisprudent rulings and that is why Sahib al-Maraqi he says وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ أَلَّفَ فِي الْكُتْبِ مُحَمَّدِ بْنُ الشَّافِعِ الْمُطَّلِبِ وَغَيْرُهُ كَانَ لَهُ سَلِيقَةً مِثْلُ الَّذِي لِلْعُرْبِ مِنْ خَلِيقَةً the first person to ever write about that field أصول الفقه was Imam al-Shafi' And it was based on, or it was done because of the request of Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, rahimahullah ta'ala. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah has a book called Kitab al-Um, which is narrated by his student Rabi' ibn Sulaiman al-Muradi from him. He also has another book called Jumma'ul Ilm or you can read it as Jima'ul Ilm when you read his two books Al-Risala and Jumma'ul Ilm and even his Kitab Al-Um the way Shafi'i Rahimahullah places the Masail the issues he puts it forward and he presents it it's just amazing if you read his book Al-Khilafiyat written by Imam Al-Bayhaqi Rahimahullah the discussion that took place between Al Imam al Shafi'i and Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani. You'll be amazed the way that the discussion is goes and the matters are dealt with and how it's tackled and how it's spoken about. You'll truly be amazed. Al Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal he said Before Imam al-Shafi'i came to us, we did not know al-Nasikh and al-Mansukh, Aam and Khas, Mutlaq and Muqayyid. We didn't know these things until Shafi'i came and taught us it.
Rahimahumullah, may Allah have the mercy upon each and every one of them. And Imam al-Shafi'i, that great noble Imam, he said about Surah Al-Asr. He said, لَوْ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ حُجَّةً عَلَىٰ خَلْقِهِ إِلَّا هَذِهِ السُّورَةِ لَكَفَتْهُمْ If Allah wa Taala was to not send down a proof on his creation except this surah, it will suffice them. What does Imam Shafi'i mean by that? He means if Allah wa Taala was to not send down lil bashariyati for mankind min hajan a methodology, and it was to not make no path for them, meaning Allah did not pave a path for them, except this surah. If he wasn't sent, accept this surah as a methodology, as a path. That is thalath al-ayat. That is thalath al-ayat. That only has three verses to it. Lakanat kafiyah. It would only be enough. It would suffice them. Why? Layanna hadhi surah, because this surah, rasamat al-manhaj al-lazhi shara'ahu Allah ta'ala, tariqan lil-najati. This surah has drawn the methodology which Allah wa Taala He legislated, the path for prosperity, success, which is to have iman, to come with righteous actions, to call to good, and to be one who is patient. These four things are what a nation can gain prosperity with. And if Allah wa Taala chose to send down any other surah in the Quran except this then that will be enough for guidance, whoever is looking for guidance. And it would be enough for anybody who is looking for prosperity and success. And to summarize it that short, and to speak about something as powerful as that, وَهَذَا مِنَ الْإِعْجَازِ الَّذِي لَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ تَعَالَى No one can do this. That three verses talks about a, the whole methodology of success. It's clarifying for us what? Hadifatul Ummah. The responsibility of the whole Ummah of us, all of us, the responsibility that we need to come in. It is telling us each and every single one of us what we need to do. And that is why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah lakhasa Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah al-Murad bil ayati fi kalimat. Ibn Taymiyyah summarized this whole statement, especially the statement of who? The statement of Imam al-Shafi'i, when he brought it in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, the 28th volume, page 152, he said, Huwa kama qal, he said, the issue is as Imam al-Shafi'i said. He's saying, the matter is how Shafi'i said it, meaning he could not have said it better. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ جَلَّ وَعَلَىٰ Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala أَخْبَرَ أَنَّ جَمِيعَ النَّاسِ خَاسِرُونَ Allah told us that all of mankind are in loss. إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ فِي نَفْسِهِ مُؤْمِنًا Except the person who is a believer. صالح and who is righteous. وَمَعَ غَيْرِهِ مُوصِيًا بِالْحَقِّ And he is one who calls to other than himself good and the truth. وَمُوصِيًا بِالصَّبْرِ and he calls the people to patience. And he comes with it himself. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he brought something like that as well. In regards to this matter. Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said, فَهَذِهِ السُّورَةَ عَلَى اخْتِصَارِهَا هِيَ مِنْ أَجْمَعِ السُّورِ الْقُرْآنِ لِلْخَيْرِ بِحَذَافِرِهِ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي جَعَلَ كِتَابَهُ كَافِيًا عَنْ كُلِّ مَا سِوَاهُ شَافِيًا مِنْ كُلِّ دَائِنْ هَادِيًا إِلَىٰ كُلِّ خَيْرٍ Ibn Al-Qayyim says this surah even that though it is very summarized and very small it is it is the most comprehensive surah of the Quran to all good it has brought all good from all of its corners and praise is to the one praise is to who? praise is to the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who made his book, kafir an kulli ma siwahu, his book, one that suffices us from everything else. 
shafiya min kulli da'in a cure to all illnesses hadiyan ila kulli khayrin and one that guides us to all form of good al shaykh atiya salim rahimahullah the student of al shaykh muhammad al amin al shanqirti who even finished off the kitab adwa'u al bayani fi idah al qur'an bil qur'an he's the one who finished it he put a tatimma he said فصارت هذه الصورة he said this surah has become بحق جامعة لأصول الرسالة it has become a comprehensive fundamental surah chapter for the message of Islam and I will conclude there inshallah ta'ala for today سبحانك اللهم بحمدك شهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه